Hey, what's going on, everybody? Tropical Tim in the Philippines here. So today we're gonna discuss, would it be advisable for you, as a foreigner, to procure and run your own Sorry Sorry store? Now, a Sorry Sorry store is nothing more than a little neighborhood quick item kind of place. You know, you're just your basics, your sodas, your beers, your liquors, your cigarettes, your candies, some canned goods, things like that. Uh, welcome to Renato's store here on Abenico Road in Port of Princesa, Palawan. We got some customers here enjoying some some of the local fare. Wait, I better I better go talk to my girlfriend here real quick. Alexa Shut up. <laughs> Alexa, I love you. Thank you. I really appreciate those kind words. And because you're so kind, I'm giving you a virtual gift. A tree of kindness. Right now, the tree is sprouting. And the more kindness you show, the more this tree will grow. Wow, how nice. I appreciate that. So anyway, that was my girlfriend, Alexa. So, okay, um, back to the store. There's a history of this store, of course. Uh, when we bought it, it, it was a failed, defunct store. And we purchased it in 2016. And of course, if you haven't seen my video, uh, the one prior to this one, I show you uh, the completed rebuild of the entire structure. So now today, I'm just gonna focus on the store. So so see, we can we seat guests here. and we sell different kinds of cooked food as you saw by the sign out there now as far as the store goes as you saw in the beginning Filipino stores typically have all of their products hanging and there's a couple reasons for that you can't even see inside their store most times um, because they want to show all the color and all that they're fully stocked and they have a lot of items um, and quite frankly, Filipinos don't really need to see everything is the way I understand it. They're going to ask for what they need anyway. We're a little different. We don't hang things in, by streamers, uh, kind of, kind of like this, this little thing here off to the side. We don't really do that. Um, so ours is a little different. This is a small store, but it's bright. It's colorful, it's airy. There's Jeanette. That is our A number one employee. Some of the some of the differences in layout is we consolidate all of our stuff into these neat little drawers and, and it just makes it easier for us. It saves on a lot of room because if you hung everything from the ceiling, uh, you wouldn't be able to see anything in here anyway. So this is kind of how we have it set up and it works out quite nicely. These are all the medicines, just little tiny, these little plastic drawers, and they work out pretty good. We even have an ice cream case, very popular. We sell, again, all kinds of miscellaneous things, different drinks, sodas, and it's really by trial and error mostly. Hey, what's this? Wow, tell you what, we'll get back to that later. Um, and we do sell cooked foods, we sell frozen foods. Um, here is the namesake of the store. Our dearly departed, my wife's brother, Renato. You see that? There's his ashes, we keep him in the store because we built this not for us, but for him. But during the rebuild, he passed away. Uh, little did we know that that was that was uh, in his future or in our future. So we keep it very simple. Again, everything's by trial and error. I would say that if you're starting out, you probably want to have roughly, after all your equipment and your setup, I would say 20,000 pesos, roughly $400 to buy your initial stock. Uh, you can see kind of how, instead of hanging everything, we, pu we pull all the streamers because when you buy, everything is all connected in, in streamer packs, so we pull it apart, and this is just how 
we do it. It's easier for us. Again, it saves on room and it works for us. We even feature cold drinks. You can see the, the hot dogs that we're selling on the steamer here. You see some folks out there enjoying it right there. And then whatever doesn't sell, however much we make, we will convert that into, yeah, ice pops. And we do different flavors. We have about 15 different flavors. Those are chocolate, just different things that works for us. Now when we bring things in here to the uh, store, when, when we shop or we get our deliveries, everything is in, put into the register and inventoried automatically. And then we can do reports that show what sold and what didn't. <clears throat> and it takes a while, actually, to kind of figure out what your specific neighborhood wants. Now, most Filipinos are going to buy pretty much the same thing, but not always, so you have to go by your neighborhood. Uh, there, there's some things that we'll sell in this store that won't in the next store. And by the way, the next store is way up that road up there. So by this store being here, and there's nothing that way, all the way to town. Uh, it helps this community that they have a place to go. So speaking of the storage, I'm gonna show you a little bit down here what we do. Now you see how I built the store to street level because the house goes down, because it's downhill. And what we do here is we have these coffin Tupperwares. You just pick it up, it rolls out. So this is kind of like back stock, things like that. That space goes all the way back there and almost everything under there is store specific. And you can see, if I can get the curtains open here, we got a couple more, so when they shop and they have excess, we put everything here in the backstop. Again, you just pick it up, roll it out, and put it right back in there. So it works out pretty good. Now some of the services that we offer here, we offer GCash, of course, we also do loads on their phones for both Smart and Globe. And this, I call it my one arm bandit, my slot machine. This is a Peso Wi-Fi. And what it does is it actually makes money while you're asleep, all hours of the day. People come here, drop their coins in, and they can get internet service based on how much they pay. They get a certain allocated amount of time. Now we do portion things down. We've got brown sugar, we've got rice, <clears throat> we've got charcoal, because these people can't afford gas for gas stoves, and certainly not electric for electric stoves. A whole bunch of other small items. Again, here's the sugar. You buy it in bulk, make it up. Salt. And a whole array of other things based on, again, the needs of the community. And you're gonna lose money initially because some things will expire that you thought they might want. Uh, and it just, it, it takes a while, it takes a good year to figure out what people here actually will buy and what they won't buy. So you have to be patient and you have to be well vested in it. Now, we don't use this store for our income. We don't need it, trust me. We definitely don't need it. We take the money that we make and we pump it back into the community. We'll help schools, churches, our own local neighborhoods and things like that. Now we do get deliveries of some items, things like beer, alcohol, ice cream, Coke and Pepsi products, some foods, not all, but some, and not necessarily everything in there in these drawers, it, it, it just depends. But it's so much easier to just go in here now. We put these stickers on here because the prices change. When the prices go up on us, then we raise the price accordingly. If they go down, then we'll drop the price accordingly. That's just the way it works. But it works really well for us. Um, and that's pretty much how it goes. 
again, many things are delivered, but some we do have to go to town for some things, and I don't. That's between Ray, my wife, and Jeanette. They do they take care of that. Uh, I would say that right now, now that we've been in business and running for a while, our average daily take gross is probably between three and 3,000 and 3,500 pesos a day. Some days can make more. Very rarely, rarely do we slip under 2,000 pesos a day. And that's being open from six in the morning till eight at night. Uh, and if we, we do drop below 2,000, it's probably because it's torrential rains or something on that order. Usually the way it goes. So that's about it. So this kind of a store, uh, and of course you can go bigger, but then you're gonna have to have employees and pay them to feature more products and things like that. But for this little thing, it actually is very successful and does quite nicely. So this store probably makes right now, and it, it still continues to develop and grow with all the services we provide because we do make money on the Gcash when people are cashing out or sending money somewhere else uh, with the loads on the phone when they want to put loads on their phone usually they do uh, the average is 10 to 20 pesos a load sometimes it'll be 50 on occasion it could be 100 and there's different fees based on how much they want we do sell a whole bunch of miscellaneous items school supplies and masks and feminine products and paper and you'd be surprised they'll come out of the woodwork and what they'll ask for. Now we can't keep everything in here, but we try to keep what we believe, based on time and experience, what the customers around here want. Of course, we get a lot of road traffic stopping here too. So that helps a great deal. Okay, so now the question becomes, if you came over here, any Westerners or foreigners, would a sorry sorry store be an answer to uh, supplement your income needs as it be? based on your income that you have available to you once you come over here permanently? I don't know, good question. Um, I knew nothing about a sorry sorry store except my use of them uh, years past. My first time was probably 1980. Uh, my wife definitely doesn't know anything about running one as far as, of course, she's used them growing up here in the Philippines as far as uh, shopping at them. It's, it's not for us, it's not what we want. Uh, I'm not saying we're tied down to it, it's nothing like that, um, but we wanted, we felt we wanted to help develop the business um, because that's what we were committed to and that's what we're doing right now. So for us, it's, it's okay, uh, but really Ray works it uh, only as much as she feels like it because we do have full-time employees. Um, I don't really have anything to do with it. I did in the beginning just to help launch it and get it going. Uh, I'll, I'll fill in or something like that. I'll answer the bell because we do have a bell at the window. Ding dong. So for anywhere in the house and you're by yourself, you know somebody's at the window. So, But it might be a good idea if you come over here and you uh, get a girlfriend or get married or something like that. And you're a good guy and you want to help somebody out like uh, maybe your wife's mom or parents or grandma or an aunt or maybe a sibling. Uh, Yes, they, they, if you set it up right and do it right and learn from it, uh, they can make some money. It can be a, an income maker for them uh, if you're doing it the right way. You see how so many, the beginning of those slide, that slideshow that I showed you, they're so dark and so full of things, it's, it's hard to see and look in there. But that's because the Philippines is going to ask directly for what they want. I want this, give me that, do you have that? It doesn't matter what they see, but Filipinos, they stack those windows uh, and, and, and the, the storefronts with so much stuff, you can't see the uh, forest through the trees, but that's the way it goes. So um, it is interesting. Uh, I learned a lot uh, doing this. The store's up and running and it's been running really good. We're very pleased with it, um, but eventually we hope to turn that over someday. It's just our design, what we came up with and what we're dealing with now, and we're okay with it. it it's okay, but uh, we don't let it run our life. We, we don't need it, it has nothing to do with that. But again, all the money that we make from it, we turn that right back over to the community. And you'll see that in my sharing is caring videos, of course. Um, but anyway, thanks for stopping. I hope you got a little bit of something out of this. Um, 
And just keep in mind, uh, I, I wouldn't use a, a store like this as your sole base of income because A, you're going to be married to it. You probably can't afford to pay employees to run it for you so you can be out and about partying and traveling and doing whatever. It's not going to work because the income level is only going to be so high. It's only going to be so high. So keep that in mind. But with that, hey, thanks for stopping. Peace out. And we'll learn cut the